Imagine if you were invited to meet your favorite royal. As you try to contain your excitement and keep a handle on your nerves, you might also be wondering what you're going to wear. Well, we have just the expert for you. Lucy Hume from Debrett's teaches British protocol and modern manners so that you can avoid raising any royal eyebrows. So here's everything you need to know about fashion etiquette ahead of your next trip to the palace. Fashion etiquette has evolved from practicalities and rituals and traditions that inform what we wear for, the, for different events and it gives guests some guidance as to what other people would be wearing and so that they don't feel uncomfortable when they arrive. Mm. And where do they come from? It's a very good question and it varies according to different cultures. For example, if you look at your typical business suit that you might wear to work for men and women, um, whether it's a skirt suit or a trouser suit, that has evolved over centuries from a very formal tailcoat to the lounge suit dress code that we know today. So what are the main dress codes? The most formal, we have, uh, for for example, a state banquets or um, a royal event, you would be looking at a dress code like white tie, which is um, similar to black tie, which we see on the red carpet, but the, the bow tie is white and it has a wing collar for men as opposed to a turn down collar. And for that dress code, women would be expected usually to wear a long formal evening gown. Okay. Then we have black tie, which is a shorter dinner jacket for men and a black bow tie. Women can wear a trouser suit or a, a cocktail dress. And then we come down to lounge suits, which is you know what you would be familiar with going to the office. And then smart casual. Let's say we got invited to Buckingham Palace for a garden party. Would you get a dress code? Would you actually would that come in your invitation? Typically for a garden party, the expectation is formal day wear, which would be similar to a wedding, but perhaps not quite as formal. So you could wear a hat, but it wouldn't be 100% expected. It would be usually a, a dress or a skirt or a trouser suit, um, dress with a jacket and heels, but not necessarily stilettos because it would take place outside on the grass, so you don't want to sink into the grass. Smart flat shoes would be absolutely fine. Trainers usually, no, 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 um, okay. for that kind of event. <laughs> <laughs> um, but heels, I think, do tend to, it's a little bit like the suit for men, it kind of tends to automatically improve your posture slightly and make you stand a bit straighter and give you that kind of sense of occasion which can be quite helpful. And how about how much skin you can have on show? So you're wearing this lovely dress, it's definitely the right dress for the occasion. Does it have to be below the knee? There are certain events within the formal social season, for example, Royal Ascot, the, um, the, the main royal enclosure, dictates that women's dresses should come below the knee and I believe also that shoulders should be covered. As far as other events where there's a, a degree of more flexibility, I really think comfort is the most important consideration and I don't I don't necessarily mean, you know, shoes that are comfortable, I mean what what makes you feel confident. So if you feel confident wearing quite a short skirt, that's fantastic and you'll you'll look amazing. That's a good tip. <laughs> I feel like yeah, if if that's kind of why etiquette's there to make sure everyone feels more confident and more comfortable then I guess yeah if you think it's right to go with it then that's quite a good yeah. guideline to go by. Absolutely yeah but it's, it's certainly there's a level of um, formality I would say if you look at some of the events that the Queen attends she tends to wear quite formal skirt suits or you know a dress and a, and a coat and mm. very often a hat and gloves so that's sort of the benchmark of what's expected from guests. A royal event is not necessarily a time to go to unconventional or to alternative I think maybe save that for another time it's, <laughs> it's just one of those occasions where it makes sense to stick with tradition and yeah. possibly stay within the the guidelines. And do you think it's always better to dress up? Best to err on the side of formality is what we always say. Nobody's going to be offended if you've made too much effort, whereas they might be if you turn up looking a bit sloppy. Yeah, there is always that really uncomfortable feeling when you're sat around a table and you're like, I have not got this right. <laughs> I look so much more casual than all of you and I just want to go home. <laughs> So that would be awful if that happened with the Queen there. <laughs> I'm sure she would not judge you, Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> and what about men? So we're, we're back at Buckingham Palace garden party. What would a man wear? So a man would typically wear a suit. But for 
a wedding, for example, or a season event, the morning suit is the kind of most formal dress, day dress code, uh, and that is a tail coat in either black or grey with grey trousers. Belts should typically be black or brown, so I would usually be dictated by your shoes first of all, and then that's your belt. Quite often men, I mean traditionally, not so often nowadays, but men might have worn braces which are then concealed under the jacket, the coat. You just mentioned that typically people used to do this, but now people do things differently. So how about the future of etiquette? Can, you, can we expect it to kind of continue to move with the times? The last year has certainly given us many opportunities to develop new um, rules around how we do things. I've become a hairdresser this lockdown, <laughs> uh, much to um, my children's horror. <laughs> and also increasingly as we mix with people from overseas and um, do business internationally and the holiday overseas, we have influences from other cultures and often want to incorporate those into our own traditions as well. So now you're an expert on royal fashion. But do you know how you'd introduce yourself or dine in Her Majesty's presence? Find out in our other episodes of An Afternoon Tea With.